I'd like to build a simple boat. Boat plans. I like that. That's what I need right there. Metric. I'll pick the standard. The first thing I'm doing here is ripping my four by eight sheets in half to make the sides of the boat. I'm cutting enough plywood to make two boats. I'm sealing all the plywood in epoxy, two coats, sanded after each coat. scarf joints that I made with my 10 inch circular saw with the scarfing jig. If you didn't see that in previous videos, we'll be using that again to scarf the bottom sheets together. Right. 
port and starboard. This is my pattern. Now I get all my sides cut. Uh, they're two foot. This is a two foot by eight foot sheet, and I'm going to add two feet to it. This is the bow here. I have my scarf cut here, and first thing I do is you want to wet this. This is end grain, so this absorbs a lot of epoxy. And you don't want to just put the glue on there without wetting this out because you don't want that joint to be, they call it glue starved, where it sucks into it without being strong. So I'm going to wet these out and give it a little, little bit of time. And then I'm going to go back with the same epoxy, two to one epoxy thickened with silica and glue this joint together. I don't need this stick in here. The last time I did this, I did it on the floor, but I want to avoid working on the floor, so I just have two 4x8 sheets that are going to become my bottom or some other part of this boat. checked them for being a straight line on the outside edge so I can just use the outside edge to line these sheets up to get a nice straight line I just got some plastic under where this joint is so I don't glue it to my table. And another thing I did different about this skiff is I rolled the inside, what's going to be the inside of the boat, I rolled that out in a, though all the plywood out in epoxy so I don't have to crawl around inside the boat, seal it, and sand it. That's all been done already on a workbench. So I generally use a chip brush, but this is what I have on hand. It seems to be working good. And this sheet that I'm doing right now, that's going to get flipped over. Put me put some weights on top of it or something to hold that joint tight. 
All right, that's going to soak right in there. I'll give that a moment. And I'll mix up some um, more epoxy with silica in it. So I think that's about a good... Could be a little drier, but... Some soaked in, some, some puddled up a little bit. So this is the same epoxy. Thickened up. going to spread the glue on one side of this joint. Should all ooze out fine. Do the other side too. Makes for good clamping. That ought to clamp it down. That joint should be nice. Let that set up. So now let me show you an easy way to join the plywood together to make the sides of the boat with butt joints. So I've built many boats using this same method with butt joints. And uh, plenty of people before me have. So this is a piece of oak that's one inch by about two feet by five and a half. So I also have a bevel on the bottom that the chine is going to rest against. So five and a half would be two and three quarters. Good. So a butt joint is simple as butting the end grains of the plywood up against each other. So this would be the outside of the boat. This is a sample of my chine. That's what a cutaway view looks like. I have a 30 degree top and bottom. That's where the bottom of the boat 
going to be like that and the sides like that. And this bevel on the top, well, that's just there to keep water from pooling against the side of the boat. If you didn't have that bevel and you had a The side of the boat was like that. You always seem to have a pocket of water that just came, sits right on the top of this chine against the side. So that's why we got a bevel on there. So this is as simple as my chine wants to go. This is the bottom of the boat. That's going to go flush. I would probably. What we can do is for uh, for making a nice joint, we can either use some uh, thickened epoxy or some 3M5200 or some product like this. This this cures in seven days, but it makes like a gasket too. It also seals up. I probably would go with the epoxy just because everything else is epoxied and. I've used them both. They both work great. And I've used this butt block method. And you're just going to put some screws. screws I'm using are number 10 one inch stainless Bring those right below the surface so we can fill them later we'll put a series of them about every I don't know four inches or so and so now this would be the inside of the boat Chine log. This one inch spacing also gives you the same. It's going to match that rib thickness. We put that in wheel on, and that free. Then that makes a simple joint. So with the butt joint is how these skiffs were traditionally built, joining the sides and also a butt block on the bottom to join the ends of the sheets together to make the 16 foot bottom. So there's an alternative to building this skiff and make it a 16 or an 18 foot. Um, if you can come across 10 foot sheet of marine plywood, you can just butt a 10 and an 8 together, and there you go, there's a side of your boat. If not, you can do an 8 and an 8, and now you have a 16 foot boat. Just cut your bow and transom on each end. And if you're going to do a 16 foot skiff, you would have to just reduce these station dimensions from 48 inches to 40 inches. That would lose you the two feet that you need. Here's the print for the sides. Right now we're going to cut the uh, transom angle and after all the sheets are joined together 
from the tip of the bow to the tip of the stern transom. It's going to be 18 feet. So this is not, this says 10 degrees, but that's from using the speed square. This is actually 80 degrees. And this is 10 degrees here. From this, from this angle to this angle, that's a 10 degree slope going like that. So I got my sides all prepped right here. Uh, there's two coats of epoxy rolled out on here and I sanded it. That way I don't have to do it later. What I'm doing now is I'm just matching the sheets up. I'm going to make one cut with the transom here. That way both sides of the boat will be exactly the same length. I'm going to measure 18 feet from the tip of the bow. top of the transom. All right, so this is my 10 degree angle that I have across the side of the transom. And the way I got that is using this speed square. Uh, there's other ways to get an angle using protractor but uh, this is what most carpenters use to get angles, just because it's easy. And so what you're doing, you're setting, this is your pivot point right here. And your degrees are on this outside edge. All these other are for different uh, framing roofs, pitches. But we're just concerned with these degrees. So you're going to line up 10 degrees, which is in between the 5 and the 15, along from this pivot point to this edge of the sheet. And that's what we're looking at right there. So I'm going to put this track on there and cut this. So here it is, the completed sides of the boat, 18 feet of plywood. I had to give the joints a second coat of thickened epoxy. Then I rolled out all the rest of the plywood.